to the Virtual Groomer. My name is Jack, your host, and today I'm bringing you a new series on the channel. Um, probably throughout the whole of the time I've been doing this, I've, I've been consistently asked to try some of the classic soaps, you know, um, Parasso, a Saponificio Veracino, um, Cella, Speak, stuff like that. And I think a large reason that is, is because not everyone has access to the artisanal products I generally use. More recently, with the uh, tag video, um, DK started shaving with the classics. Um, and the reason why I didn't use something very, very classic was because this is going to be my own spin off series. Um, something I've been wanting, thinking about doing for a while. Basically, the way this is going to work is once a week, I think I'm going to do this on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, I'm going to be shaving with a different vintage classic product. Um, that will be in soap form. So. Lined up, I've got Speak, La Toja, Palm Olive Shave Stick, Cella, Prorasso, Saponificio Veracino. I'm gonna buy Velabra. I'm gonna buy all of them and I'm gonna use all of them. And the big thing I wanna do here is for those people that don't have access to those like artisan soaps, this is for you. You know, this is this is my way of giving back to you. So today, um, our first episode of this new series. I'm going to be using the famous Italian cream made in 1899 in Milano. Uh, basically, I'll give you a bit of history about this. So this was, I'd say, Cella specifically became or became a company when the fashion scene in Milan was blowing up. Um, however, it wasn't always in this format. Uh, the packaging was created like this in 1920 to, I, I guess, the, after World War One, um, the use of double-edged razors, kind of like we use today, became much more popular. Thus, basically meaning that in the tradition that went from the barbershop was then partaken in the home. And what they needed to do, what Cello wanted to do, is they wanted to stand out from the crowd. And the way they did this was creating this um, specific man. So if you look at this man here, this man basically shows a guy shaving with what looks like a double-edged razor or a brush. I think it's probably a brush, but he's in his pajamas. And the reason why he's in his pajamas is they basically wanted to depict that this is a private ritual one does in their home. And Cella is used specifically for that. This specific format, this tub, was developed in the 1960 after the brick format, which is a kilogram brick, you can basically chop up, a kilogram is basically 2.3 pounds. Um, you chop up, you can store, you can do whatever. But that was that was formerly used by barbers. That was what the barbers were using in Italy. And when this was founded, this gave every man, every man, woman who needed to shave, a format to use cello that was easily accessible. And that's what I'm gonna be using today. So, cello is a tallow soap. It has a very minimalist um, ingredient space here. So the ingredient space is Coconut oil, um, tallow, stearic acid, aqua, potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium carbonate, sweet almond oil, and parfum. Uh, the scent of cello, if you don't know, to me is just straight up marzipan. Uh, it's very almondy. The scent strength on this is probably about six out of seven. And it's very soft. So this is what, what it looks like inside cello. I can press it down and there's a clear kind of like dent in this. Uh, we are gonna be tub loading it and we're gonna be trying it that way. To go along with this classic shave, I'm gonna be using the Titanium Christopher Bradley and we're gonna be revisiting our Declaration B5. So let me start loading from this tub and uh, we'll get to shaving with this. So I hope you guys appreciate what I'm trying to do with this series. Um, it is for those people that don't have access to all these artisanal products and the beauty of these sorts of products is they're so readily available that everyone can use them. So the way I'm lathering this, for anyone that doesn't know, is I'm not splaying. I'm just, I'm lightly brushing the tips on the surface here, just like that. This is a croak, this is an Italian soft soap. This is the popular style of Italian soaps, I would say. Same thing Parasso adopted and companies like that. 
Okay, I wonder if we've got enough here, but we're gonna pick up a bit more. Just a bit more. Shadow's highly regarded, it's a very good soap, so I'm looking forward to using it, that should be enough. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this off here. get the glasses off and we'll uh, get to lathering this up. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, like I've always said to you, I love using the artisanal stuff, but there's something about using products like this that I know people would have used in their bathrooms in the early 1900s. After World War One, you know, it's, it's a very old, well-renowned product. Okay, let's lather. I can tell you that it's good already. Um, I can kind of tell by the lather it's created immediately. Okay, let's uh, spray the brush here. I actually really like the scent. Okay, so the brush is splayed. Let's get some more water in here. The tips on this brush are so soft. It's creating quite a high structure lather, which is typical for soaps of old. Which is quite airy, but not in a bad way. Like, don't get me wrong, the fact that it's airy doesn't detract from the overall quality of the soap. It's just how things were back then, you know? Coconut oil is a very high ingredient on this. And coconut oil tends to add those suds. Um, it makes the soap sud up a bit easier. But don't worry, we're gonna create a, a virtual green room lather with this, I assure you. You can see what it's doing. It's very puffy. It's quite dense, but not really dense. Just play again. Add some more water. Well, this is a really nice scent. <laughs> These products are timeless, um, which is why I'm probably going to call this series, Timeless Tuesday. They're gonna come out on Tuesdays until I've cycled through. I'd also like your guys' recommendations of soaps you want me to, to use. I know I've used like Mitchell's Warfight and stuff on the channel before, but I, I will be featuring them in this because Mitchell's Warfight has a big place in this classic wet shaving scene. I've also got a pack of Tallow Hasslinger on the way by Michael Friedberg, which is fantastic. This stuff just works, is the way I would put it. It just lathers like really, really easily. It's funny because I prefer shaving with those low structure lathers, but these high structure kind of like big puffy lathers are so fun to use. <laughs> So I'm gonna just paint some water in here and we'll get to shaving. Get a bit more slickness into this. A little bit more.
really nice. So what we can do here, we'll draw the lines, take that, take that. So yeah, cello also comes in like a different format, which is like a kilogram brick. Um, I opted to do it in the tub, mainly because I would never get through a kilogram of any soap. Uh, I just use too many different soaps for that. But if you are interested in this, that is definitely an option for you. So comparing this to Mitchell's Warfare, from what I know of Mitchell's Warfare, because I have used that before, it creates an area mother. I mean, look, I'm not, I don't look at airy as a bad thing. Airy is just a type of lather. Um, it's in that style of old, which is perfectly fine. So, so here we go. This is what the style of old does, peaks. <laughs> So today I'm going to be shaving with the Titanium Christopher Bradley and inside that I have a second use Repair of Platinum Lux. Looks very good. I wouldn't expect any different, trust me. The fact that it's been around for so long it's not going to be shit. So there's also tobacco. The reason I don't have tobacco is because it's really expensive. If anyone has tobacco lying around that they don't want, please let me know and we can arrange something. But the cost of actual t the problem is is I'm not never I'm probably never going to use tobacco again. I've smelled it before and it's not for me. But I think. It'd be a weird vintage soap series without featuring tobacco. Very nice. Really easy, no nonsense first pass. Residual slickness is good. So it's funny actually because something I'd like to say is there's a lot of things we do now that men of old wouldn't have done. You know? um, there's lots of products to make what we do much more convenient. It's actually a really good soap. Let's get the uh, second pass lather going. So we we have things like pre-shaves and um, things like that, pre-shaves, the way we add water, fancy towels. I mean, frankly, I imagine quite a lot of men of old would have just loaded the brush, just, you know, splayed it a little bit, painted a little bit, and then went to town. But I don't even know if it was always done in three passes. That's probably more relevant to the individual, honestly. I don't even know what they'd have used the post shave, probably some sort of a traditional alcohol splash. It's very good soap. I have just about 24 hours of breath. This is a lovely blade, this repair of platinum marks.
What a great shame. Let's go uh, kind of up on the sideburns here. So paint a bit of uh, lather onto that area. Excellent. That was a great shave, guys. Um, let me get this lather on my face, which is, there's loads of it. Let me get this lather on my face and I will be back for the post shave and the final thoughts. I'll see you soon. Hey guys, welcome back. It is post shave time. So, something that I would immediately say um, what I found with a lot of vintage shocks, maybe not Mitchell's Wolf Fat or Hasslinger, actually I had a good experience with Hasslinger. I found them to be quite tightening. Um, and I think that to me attributes the huge amount of um, coconut oil in this. Uh, it is quite tightening, it is a little bit drying. I'd actually say the kind of like immediate experience with these are actually pretty similar to most soaps now. Maybe a bit more similar to soaps of old, like uh, K-Shave Works and stuff like that, where they build big fluffy lathers. Um, so we are gonna use a post shave today. Um, and I'm gonna be using a new tester I got from Zingari. This is alcohol free. Okay, that's interesting. Very thin. Doesn't seem very heavy at all, this. Which is my preference, really. Okay, let me go, uh, let me show you what I used. Bit of some final, final thoughts, and I'll let you guys go. So, first episode of Timeless Tuesday was done with Cella. My thoughts on this are it's very good. Uh, it lathers very easily. It can take quite a bit of water. Uh, slickness and residual slickness are both very good. Uh, latherability is also pretty high up there as well. I did use distilled water with this. Uh, tell me if you lather it up easily with hard water, let me know. Um, the post shave on this, like quite a lot of soaps of old, is quite dry. I, I would generally use a, a balm or an aftershave. Um, I'd recommend a balm, really. Uh, a, a balm or a good, good toner like I just used just now. Um, I think this is a fantastic product. <laughs> I, I honestly do, I, I really enjoyed using it. The timeless aspect of it is really cool to me. I really like the packaging, it's, it screams cello, and uh, that means something to me, you know? The, the fact that these products are timeless and have been used for so long, and I can stand here now and shave with them, is just so cool. Uh, yeah, there's not, there's not much more I can elaborate on that. I hope you guys have enjoyed kind of like the the spotlight of cello and I hope you appreciate quite a lot of the stuff I'm going to be doing with this series but yeah I find it very enjoyable um Christopher Bradley and Titanium prototype uh the final version of the razor this is grade 2 Titanium the final version version of the razor is going to be made with grade 5 um my brush was the Declaration B5 with these incredible handle turn and shave he again knocked out of the park for this. And uh, my red Lancaster towel. Um, love this thing. Love all the gear I used today. Um, like I said, hope you guys have enjoyed the video of Chella. If you have any kind of feedback or soaps you want to see me use throughout this series, please let me know and I'll make sure I pick them up because this is gonna be quite a lot of fun to me, trying all these new, not even new, all, all of these old things and cycling through them. But yeah, um, any plugs. If you look at my last video, I announced the PIF winner, that was Ryan Follick. Congratulations, Ryan. I've contacted Ryan, I will be sending him the soaps. Um, I will be doing another PIF this coming Friday, so stick around and look at my Friday video. Like I said, I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm not trying to tell loads of people to get loads of subscribers. This is solely for you guys, and I hope you really appreciate it or I really appreciate you being around and I hope you guys appreciate what I'm trying to do here. So just keep watching, keep commenting, keep discussing. That's what I like, that's what I get off on. I really enjoy it. But yeah, um, like I said, any recommendations you have for any other vintage soaps, put them in the link below. If anyone has a 
spare tub or puck of tobacco they don't want, let me know and we'll arrange something. But yeah, my name is Jack, your host in the virtual grim room. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful day and a better shave. And goodbye for now.